Thank you very much for your kind words of introduction. And thank you so much for having me on this very carefully planned and innovative program designed for the education of our education sponsors in our churches. Thank you so much for the pleasure of coming to you this morning. And I ask that you be with me as I go through this, this presentation um, geared for our sponsors. I want to thank the pre those presentations. I too have learned some things that were not in my notes. And uh, as an educator, it's very important for us to be on the learning curve. We cannot be too young to learn. More so, we cannot be too old to learn. And so because we are on the learning curve, we seek to get information every day that can benefit us and benefit others. So it's against that backdrop that we come this morning. Thanks again, uh, Mrs. Uh, McCoy Chambers for your invite. And thanks to the folks in Central Conference, the office there, Ms. Uh, Harris, for keeping up with me so that I could be here with you this morning. Uh, the platform was laid by Mrs. Corodas uh, uh, as it relates to the dynamics of Advanced Christian Education. So, and a lot was spoken of by Dr. Clark in her presentation as it relates to the impact of Advanced Christian Education in the church and what individuals can do in the church to, to direct attention to the various aspects of the harmonious development of the total person. The two uh, testimonials that came to us from Dr. Boswell Lewis and uh, Mrs. Forbes were very instructive and I too have learned so much from them. I, I am gonna be taking a different angle though, um, coming to you uh, uh, this morning. And I trust that as we, as we do so, we will be able to learn some more, if not a little bit more, at least to reinforce that which we have already learned. So all hands on deck, let's go. The theme that comes to us this morning is the church, a tool, for education. And immediately as we talk about that, we need to be sure that we are extremely focused on task. And uh, that is the mission of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As a Seventh-day Adventist, each one of us has to subscribe to its mission. And uh, the other question is, what does the Seventh-day Adventist, why does the Seventh-day Adventist Church exist? We exist for so many different reasons, but the, the, this is a, a very pointed question that we need to answer as educators, as members of the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Seventh-day Adventist Church exists to glorify God. And we could say there, punto final. But in all spheres of its existence, the church seeks to glorify God by giving him the honor due to his name, and to work for the restoration of the image of God in everyone, thus as much as we possibly can to maintain and improve uh, on, the, 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 on the human um, subjects so that each one can be better prepared to serve God in a more dynamic and positive way. I have two texts that I want to share with us this morning. Uh, these texts are extremely important to me. Uh, this first one comes from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And this is this is one of my trunk texts that I use so much as a Christian person first and share with others about the role that they play in service to God. Micah 6, 8, he has shown you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So as education sponsors, uh, humility is the order of the day. And you need to seek a, a relationship with God that keeps you on the cutting edge of your Christian experience. 
And you can only be sharpened when you share with others. You can only be sharpened when you know about the health and wellness of others. Uh, iron sharpens iron, we say. Love mercy means that you go beyond the call of duty because mercy is higher than justice. And uh, we must seek to always go the extra mile to bless the lives of someone else so that uh, people can be given better opportunities to serve God and to better themselves. The second text uh, I heard um, Mrs. Forbes quoted from Isaiah 54 verse 13, all your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children. Both texts came from the New King James Version. So what we are saying that as a church, uh, uh, we have to make sure that our children are properly taken care of. Uh, at the onset, I just want to say to all on this platform, I have three grown adult children, but none of them experienced government education. All of my children came through daycare, preschool, early childhood, high school, and Northern Caribbean University. They did sit the entrance exams to go to high schools. Cornwall College and bishops here in Mandeville, but I refuse to send them to those schools because of my purpose and the mission on which I am on for Adventist Christian education. That's just a note. So what's work and the worth of the local church in mission? I don't want to say that the local church does not exist to make a name for itself in the community. We're not after the name game. We're not after the popularity as a church. That's not what we're going after. The local church does not exist to acquire or yield some kind of political power. We stay away from politics. We stay away from that type of experience. The local church seeks to point itself and boast of all that it does in the world. But at the same time, the local church does not focus itself rather on itself and it does not boast about all it does in the world by its power and influence in society we can spend so much time looking at these that we lose sight of our mission its mission purpose and design are so that we can bring glory to god by upholding his truth bringing souls to him and preparing people to spend eternity with him in heaven and to populate the new jerusalem that's the mission of the church. Uh, somebody said it earlier, the work of education and the work of redemption, one and the self same thing. So as education sponsor, as a Christian, you are on the right trajectory when you start to talk about Christian education in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. So let's talk about SDA education and mission. The Seventh-day Adventist philosophy of education is Christ-centered. It's all about Christ. Adventists believe that under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, God's character and purposes can be understood as revealed in nature, the Bible, and Jesus Christ. So every step of the way, this is our philosophy that undergirds our education system. I want to begin by pointing out four cornerstones of Adventist education. Our education is built on a firm foundation. And the four cornerstones are, one, we recognize that all truth is God's truth. And that speaks volume for itself. Secondly, we foster whole person development, body, mind, and spirit. Thirdly, we nurture faith. And that's why in everything that we do in our school systems, we seek to integrate, actively integrate faith in learning. And number four, we educate for eternity. We not only educate for time in today's society so that someone can become a useful person in the society, but also we point to eternity because what does it profit if we gain everything in this world and lose our soul? not only for ourselves, but for our children and other people's children. So what's the purpose of true education? It's not just about getting good grades, but about developing a sense of purpose 
and meaning in life. It is about discovering one's passions, talents, and strengths, and using them to make a positive impact on the world. That is what true education does for us. Uh, one of the key aspects of true education is character development. And by character development, we won't need to speak very clearly that this is different from reputation. Reputation is what people think or say you are. Character is really what you are. So that's what the true education seeks to develop character, which is the only thing we take from earth to heaven. And that is why we say, guard your character with your life. In speaking about the characters, therefore, we must make sure that our young people, our children are properly taught. Education, uh, Ellen White says that true education means more than the pursuit of a certain course of study. It means more than a preparation for the life that now is. it is to do with the whole being and with the whole period of existence possible to man. It is a harmonious development of the physical, the mental, and the spiritual powers. Ellen White Education, page 13. That said, we have actually covered the platform on which we build. The Inter-American Division speaks quite clearly, in which we belong, by the way, Jamaica Union, and our conference is embedded in the Inter-American Division. Um, and this program is the Seventh-day Adventist Christian Education. It says that the Seventh-day Adventist Church, through its education programs, proposes to help the young people to prepare for effective citizenship on this earth and for gratifying citizenship in the earth made new. The education program of the church places utmost importance on building character and on the spiritual foundation of the lives of our children and young people. It also offers ample provision for the acquisition and interpretation of the skills necessary for the accumulation of knowledge and the acquiring of the common secular habits which help in mental, social, vocational, and physical development. The church believes in balanced education. So, the church has various levels in its system of education. We have the elementary level, we have the secondary level, we have the tertiary level or higher education. Some places have preschools, we have daycares that take, that take care of the young ones, zero to two, and sometimes three, and sometimes maybe beyond. But the Seventh-day Adventist Church caters all the way for the education of our young people. Where ed elementary education is concerned, elementary schools of the church will help each child to develop love and appreciation for the privileges, rights, and responsibilities that are guaranteed to each individual or social group. And secondly, to respect and a wholesome attitude towards society, the home, the church, the school, and the government. So very, very early in the child's life, the child needs to know privileges, rights, and responsibilities, and respect. That moves on to say that the elementary school will offer an organized program, which will assure the adequate development conducive to spiritual, physical, mental, and emotional health, providing a strong foundation of practical and intellectual knowledge for daily life. That's what you get from the elementary school. When you move up to the secondary school, you will build on the qualities instilled in the students who attend our elementary schools. It is, its basic structure is building character by working realistically to teach its students how to be healthy, how to strive for the mastery, of the basic principles of learning, how to behave with dignity in the home, teaching them vocational skills. Dr. Clark touched on that very early, giving them civic instructions, teaching them to make good use of their free time and helping them to mature ethically. It's very important, therefore, for us to know how our secondary schools function. It is used, therefore, as an instrument of the church's philosophy, and it will try to reach the objectives of spiritual dedication, self-development, social adjustment, civic responsibility, and economic 
efficiency. Looking at all of that, you can see why a number of young people, though they did not get to move on beyond secondary school, are very prolific and dynamic in making a life for themselves in society after they have completed our high schools. But in higher education, the Sunday Adventist Church runs institutions of higher learning to provide special opportunities for the Sunday Adventist youth who have satisfactorily completed their secondary studies and who are desirous of pursuing further studies in arts and science to obtain a degree that can prepare them for life or admission in a postgraduate institution. These institutions, while doing the creative and evaluation work entrusted to them, will help the students to develop ethical, religious, and social values that are compatible with the philosophy and teachings of the church. Values that will prepare the students to offer the, for office in his discipline or vocation within the organization or outside of the organization. Our institutions also help to develop in their students a higher concept of service to God and humanity. So we find that God takes care of us when we take care of our children. I want to share a clip with you as we move on with the dynamics of looking out for others and working together for the development. It's actually called situational leadership. Once upon a time, a turtle and a rabbit had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. The turtle and the rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. The rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. I want to apologize for that. Once upon a time, a turtle and a rabbit had an argument about who was faster. They decided to settle the argument with a race. The turtle and the rabbit both agreed on a route and started off the race. The rabbit shot ahead and ran briskly for some time. Then, seeing he was far ahead of the turtle, he thought he'd sit under a tree for some time and relax before continuing the race. He sat under the tree and soon fell asleep. The turtle, plodding on, overtook him and soon finished the race, emerging as the undisputed champ. The rabbit woke up and realized that he'd lost the race. The moral of the story is that slow and steady wins the race. This is the version of the story that we've all grown up with. But our version of the story continues. The rabbit was disappointed at losing the race and he did some thinking. He realized that he'd lost the race only because he had been overconfident, careless, and lax. If he had not taken things for granted, there's no way the turtle could have beaten him. So, he challenged the turtle to another race. The turtle agreed. This time, the rabbit went all out and ran without stopping from start to finish. He won by several miles. The moral of the story? Fast and consistent will always beat the slow and steady. It's good to be slow and steady, but it's better to be fast and reliable. But the story doesn't end here. The turtle did some thinking this time and realized that there's no way he can beat the rabbit in a race the way it was currently formatted. He thought for a while and then challenged the rabbit to another race, but on a slightly different route. The rabbit agreed. The turtle and rabbit started off. In keeping with his self-made commitment to be consistently fast, the rabbit took off and ran at top speed until he came to a broad river. The finishing line was a couple of kilometers on the other side of the river. The rabbit sat there, wondering what to do. In the meantime, the turtle trundled along, got into the river, swam to the opposite bank, continued walking, and finished the race. 
the moral of the story. First, identify your core competency and then change the playing field to suit your core competency. The story still hasn't ended. The turtle and rabbit by this time had become pretty good friends and they did some thinking together. Both realized that the last race could have been run much better. So the turtle and rabbit decided to do the last race again, but to run as a team this time. They started off, and this time, the rabbit carried the turtle till the riverbank. There, the turtle took over and swam across with the rabbit on his back. On the opposite bank, the rabbit again carried the turtle, and they reached the finishing line together. Both the turtle and rabbit felt a greater sense of satisfaction than they'd felt earlier. The moral of the story? It's good to be individually brilliant and to have strong core competencies. But unless you're able to work in a team and harness each other's core competencies, you'll always perform below par because there will always be situations at which you'll do poorly and someone else does well. Teamwork is mainly about situational leadership, letting the person with the relevant core competency for a situation take leadership. And that is the end of the story. So, I trust that you have enjoyed the dynamics of that uh, short uh, video clip. And I would ask that you keep that in the back of your mind as we continue this presentation, recognizing, of course, that we all need to be good at what we do, but there's always help elsewhere that will help us to be good at what we do. So what are the advantages of Adventist schools? Why do parents choose private schools for their children? Number one, safety. This is always the biggest reason. Public schools have to take everyone, which, de which depending upon where you live, includes a lot of riffraff, a lot of students with discipline or behavioral problems that have a detrimental impact on their classmates' education and sometimes their safety. So our private schools are much safer for our children. Number two, smaller class size. Uh, or equal class sizes, but class sizes full of students who want to be there and want to learn. Number three, it's a more rigorous curriculum. This goes hand in hand with the first point above. Classes with fewer distractions get to move along at a faster pace. Number four, geographical convenience. And this is for some schools because they find that some of our private schools are located closer to the homes of our children and uh, where the parents work and it does make good um, op opportunities and possibilities for their children attending. And number five, religion included in the curriculum. Barely anyone comes to a Catholic school around here for just this reason. Barely anyone comes to a Baptist school around here for just this reason. Barely anyone comes to a Seventh-day Adventist school, barely for any particular reason. It's just this bonus in our schools we specialize and we emphasize all the way through Adventism, God, and God in humankind. That's our emphasis. So all through the curriculum, religion focuses significantly. Each church elects an education secretary to promote the gener and generate support for Christian education. The secretary is a member of the Home and School Association Executive Committee and works in cooperation with the association. That is the work of the education secretary. But there's someone inside there that is called education sponsor. The education sponsor is a different person. This person is given a lot of things to do. Sometimes baskets to carry water. Sometimes small buckets to carry water. Sometimes drums and tanks to carry water. In other words, if each church emphasizes differently on how the education sponsor works, how the Adventist Christian education is conducted in our churches. Well, I've identified a few ideas on how uh, the education sponsor can function with the backdrop of the presentation just in the video clip on situational leadership and see how the rabbit and the turtle can work together for a successful tour of beauty 
as education sponsors. So let's go. Number one, the education sponsor must support Adventist Christian education. We call it ACE. You can't, you can't give what you don't have. So you've got to support it with all your body, all your mind, everything within you must be wrapped up and embedded in supporting Adventist Christian education. And therefore, you need to know about it. Know the levels of Adventist Christian education and how they operate and how you can get your young people to get into these institutions. Number three, know how ACE benefits the person, the family, and the church. I just went through to point out quite a few when I gave the preamble as, as the, the mission of the church and how we function in the church uh, as Christians, how we need to know so that we can impart. So we need to know about Adventist Christian education and how it benefits the person, how it benefits the family, and how it benefits the church. And by the way, in the back of our minds, we must always keep eternity in view. Always keep eternity in view. Number four, pray. Pray for the church, that the church will support ACE. So many people, whenever you talk about Adventist Christian education in the church, they give a, a, a deaf ear. They don't speak about it. They don't want to hear about it. They don't want to deal with it. But back in the day when I was in my home church, Adventist Christian education was so dynamic, people spoke about it. And that's how I learned about uh, West Indies College by the education people in my local church talking about West Indies College. And from there, the rest is now in the annals of history. Number five, encourage parents and guardians to support Adventist Christian education. Remember, we use the text in Isaiah, all our children are to be taught by the Lord and the peace that our children will embrace will be great. It will be fantastic and it will bring happiness to our homes and to our lives and their lives as well. Number six, seek sponsorship for our young people. You can do it. Parents in the church who have schooled their children and have some spare money can help to sponsor students. Go outside, businesses, organizations, seek sponsorship. People are willing to help young people to better themselves because when you help young people, you end up with a better society. Number seven, provide mem mentorship to young people. Give them one-on-one -on -one talking. Talk to them. Bring them home with you if you can for Sabbath lunch. Sit them down sometimes in the afternoon at church. Talk to them. Help them to see the values in growing right and the values of a proper education. Number eight, seek scholarships. I, 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 I just want to share quite quickly. Uh, we have two education foundations at our church in Mandeville. Two families have launched education foundations at our church in Mandeville. And monies from those go towards schools, um, children going to elementary, secondary, and uh, NCU. But our church also has a budget, an education budget, to which money goes in from the church's budget into the education budget every month. So it continues to grow, and we give the church gives every student that moves from a high school to NCU, the church gives $50,000 to that student paid on the student, student's account, not in the pocket, paid on the student's account to start the, the um, NCU. We also provide money for students going to high school and elementary schools. We also help to pay uh, exam fees and sometimes help to finish students when they are in a rut uh, at the end of the journey. So the, the church must become very proactive and dynamic, and this can only be wrought when the education sponsor is on the cutting edge with the children's interests at heart. Number nine, encourage the church, therefore, to have startup funds for education. Number 10, do a trace of study. Track your own students. The students that you are supporting, know about them. Know their progress and help to encourage them along the journey. Number 11 is very closely attached to number 10. Celebrate student success. Send them notes. Write them from the church. Write them from your department. Encourage them. Give them gifts. And watch out as they succeed 
how you can help to motivate them to move along. And finally, number 12, invite personnel from the schools. West Indies College Preparatory School, the Victor Dixon High School, Northern Caribbean University, Portland High, you have Savannah Mar High, you have uh, Harris Memorial High School, you have the Willowdean Group of Schools, you have the Kingsway Group of Schools. Uh, oh, I hope I don't miss out any, but all our schools, wherever they be, invite them to come to your church and do presentations to encourage young people and parents alike to move after these kinds of help as we seek to benefit our young people. We must encourage all to gain Adventist Christian education. I was not privileged. I was not privileged before tertiary education. Primary school was government. My secondary school was government. And when I became an Adventist and leaned towards Adventist Christian education, NCU, West East College High Prep, became home for my children. West East College High and Harrison Memorial High became home for my children. And my wife and I, we delight ourselves. We, we, we relish in it because we have seen the successes of our children coming through the system, Adventist Christian education. My wife and I, we are also products of the Adventist education system. I hope that you have been blessed. I hope that this presentation has helped you. And I trust that God will give you the, 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 the stamina, the courage, the conviction to continue to promote Adventist Christian education, the way forward for us and for our children until Jesus comes to take us home. Thank you for your patience and for listening.